Welcome to Yellow Brick Road, I am Jordan, and today I'm going to talk about something you already know, Bernie Sanders dropping out, and also Bernie Sanders endorsing Joe Biden. But first, please consider donating to Devin's Journey to Recovery. The GoFundMe link is in the description box. If you have five bucks or more laying around, you want to donate to a charity, helping out one of our subscribers and his wife, you can at Devin's Journey to Recovery. GoFundMe link in the description box. All right. So as you can see, Bernie dropped out, I guess, I guess in, uh, in social media time a while ago, and uh, his endorsement, what was this, yesterday he did this? I think he did a live stream with Joe Biden, and uh, here's his endorsement of Joe Biden for president. So we are in a terrible moment, an unprecedented moment, and I know we share the, the understanding that we've got to go forward right now and out of this in an unprecedented way uh, to address the terrible pain that so many of our fellow Americans are feeling. So today I am asking all Americans, I'm asking every Democrat, I'm asking every independent, I'm asking a lot of Republicans to come together in this campaign to support your candidacy, oh. which I endorse, to make certain. Now, what's funny there is that he reacts before you're like supposed to react, which means he's like, what's going on here? <laughs> he's like, oh, and it is my duty here to, oh, oh, God, thank you, Bernie. I didn't finish saying what I was going to say yet. Uh, more cocaine for Joe, please. He needs to be up. Uh, Need him a uh, full attention here? <laughs> that we defeat somebody who I believe, and I'm speaking just for myself now, uh, is the most dangerous president in the modern history of this country. It's like, dude, I can't. He's still saying it. So it's like, does he actually believe that? I thought it was a campaign talking point. But it's like, you're out now. You're still saying this? Fuck. Like George Bush and Barack Obama happened, and uh, so I'd, what do I think of this? It's like, yeah, I, I guess I expected this. I expected this a lot more than I expected the Tulsi Gabbard one. It's like fuck. Both of you mother freakers let a lot of people down. But uh, yeah, I guess I expected this. But now it's like, it's like now you're in the camp of being a liar. I'd say both of them are, Tulsi and Bernie. Because, like, do you really think this, like, this guy who sold this war, like, how many things does he have to do? <laughs> like, no one's, how come this dude didn't stand up there and just read quotes of Joe Biden? He could have easily done that. Like, this is what you said back here, Joe, and you're not accounting for it now in regards to Iraq war or the, uh, you know, the thing he brought up during the debate, which I think was Bernie's best moment when he brought up the uh, defunding of Social Security and Medicare. So. It's like, doesn't that make you a, like a liar now? Do you know? Do you know better? Do you know better at all? <laughs> Are you. Do you seriously not. You fell asleep during the Bush era like hadn't. There's no way you actually believe this, that he's the most dangerous president. Like, they all are. I think that's the correct answer. All of them are. But if, even if you're not, even if you're not going to go there, it's like you can't look at what Bush did and look at what Trump's doing now and say one and say Trump is worse than Bush if you're going to go by those stupid fucking standards. And yes, they are stupid standards. It's like, from president to president, one person lays the ground, the other one fucking tills the shit out of it, fucking rips the ground up, and the other one comes back and patches the ground up again, the other one tears it up. Right? I would, I'd put it in a more crude context of, well, one just, you know, literally grabs you by the arm, slaps you around, and then attempts to rape you. 
the other one slips something in your drink and attempts to rape you. That's what I see here from president to president. I'm not even talking about party to by party by party. You know, Republicans will lean more towards the aggressive, the overt corruption. Democrats would be a lot more covert. All right. Um, so with all this, with the Bernie endorsement, let's add in another one. Let's add in... Uh, let's see, I got this page up. Let's add in... Uh, yeah. Half black, half white dick face. Barack Obama, who put his dick in your face for eight years and said, thank me for it. I'm going I'm to uh, pull my pants down and uh, uh, whip my dick out. Put it in people's faces. They'll uh, applaud me for it. They'll thank me. They'll give me a, a TV show. Fuck it. Fucking shithead. Can't believe people like like this person. Like, it, like, is it a person? Is it a person? Doesn't behave like a person. Behaves like something created in a lab. So this is no surprise either. It's like, I won't, I won't endorse Biden. But what I'll do is I'll do all the bat behind the closed doors things to wipe out all the competition. And then I'll have no choice but to endorse Joe Biden. <laughs> he'll continue on what I was doing. Which means I'll continue which means he'll continue on what Trump was what Trump is doing. Not that Biden's gonna win, I'm just saying. And he continue on with what Bush started. Trump continued on with what Obama started. And Whoever comes after that, if it's Biden, is going to continue on with what Trump's doing. Right? One's a slap in the face, the other one's a fucking pill in your drink. Over and over again. All right. Uh, let's see. So, with all this, this is all like. I don't know, I'm trying to, like, mash things all together into one thing, one video. So, yeah. Bernie endorses Biden, bullshitting the entire time, like, right? Trump's the worst president ever. Meanwhile, the George Bush Iraq war thing, the thing you crapping on Joe Biden for, for voting for that thing. It's like, who was the guy who actually enacted the Iraq war? Like, he doesn't exist anymore. How about the elephant in the room, Barack Obama? I said he's the elephant in the room. That like you go after him and you end him, it's over for it. Any type of creepy moderate to step up to the plate against you, because then they'll be like, "Oh, we're not fucking with it." He took Obama out, okay. And it's not hard to do. It's not hard. Yeah, you're gonna have some loyalists who just want a black president. And you're gonna have the creepy blue check mark moderates. You're gonna have those types too, but they're they were never gonna move towards you anyways. So fuck them. Let them go cry in a corner somewhere. Until then, like you have an opportunity on a national stage to end this motherfucker. Because right now his his legacy is still standing somehow. Because no one with a microphone is actually saying anything about this dude. Not even, not Tulsi, not Bernie. And Ilan Omar said something, but then took it back. It's like, end this fucking guy. Seriously. Like, in my, like, part of me is like, this dude's one of the creepiest of the creepiest. Seriously. Barack Obama seems like one of the creepiest of the creepiest. Like, pure, purebred psychopath. Uh, so yeah, continuing on with this whole, uh, Bernie, people endorsing Biden and all that, we got this. I want to say thank you to Ruben. We'll put this out. What has Matt Dust been up to lately? It looks like he might be getting a promotion. Hashtag sabotage. Now what's Ruben talking about? He's talking about this article here from nationalinterest.org all links will be in the description box and right here Bernie Sanders foreign policy advisors invited to Biden camp 
Now, most people might think that's like a good thing. Like, yeah, if we're moving Biden to the left. And I'm like, this is me going to be going into, I guess, conjecture would be the right word or some editorial, whatever, or opinion. But it's like, if you're not, if you're willing to work with this guy without first, like, pointing out every single problem with this person, if you don't do that first, I can't trust you. So when I see Ro Khanna here, I have great confidence that the Biden campaign will be a broad coalition. Sanders campaign co-chair Rep Ro Khanna told the national interest during a Tuesday press conference. As far as helping the vice president on foreign policy, I certainly would be open to sharing my perspective. Hmm. Now, if you paid attention, I already, I've already shown a distrust of Ro Khanna. Just for like little, like little human things people do. Like the whole, uh, I forgot the dude's name. The dude who's, you know, who was always complaining about uh, right wing Hindu fascists, whatever the fuck. And, uh, yeah, and Ro Khanna retweeted that, retweeted a comment under Tulsi Gabbard's tweet from, like, a year ago, and then excluded Tulsi from the, from the replies so that she wouldn't see that he did that. Or he, he, yeah, he responded to it that way. Or, uh, you know, or, uh, replied to that comment. It's like, oh, that's kind of like weird, like a like shit, like teenage, teenage girls or boys or whatever they point out. It's like, yo, why didn't you? It's like I'm right there in the mentions by default. Why'd you erase my name from there? You trying to not let me see what what you're saying? Like he did some shit like that, little shit I just noticed there. And of course, it was the the Hindu fascist smearing bullshit. Uh, so yeah. And then he, I think he just fucking, like, he politicianed his way out of that when he was talking with Jimmy Dore about it. And it's like, what the fuck, man? I don't know, something about his voice, too, the way he looks. Something about that dude. I'm like, I don't trust this motherfreaker for nothing. So, yeah, there's Rokana. Uh, the Matt Dust guy is not mentioned in this article. Uh, but he is one of, or he was one of Bernie's you know, campaign advisors in regards to foreign policy. And these guys, like Matt Duss, who I also have, I don't have any trust for, Matt Duss, Ro Khanna, they remind me of uh, someone like this. Now, I want you to pay attention to what, like, look at the contrast between the first half of this statement, of this little exchange, and the second half of this little exchange. And it's quite interesting. It's like, whoa. It's like the humanitarian mask in one half. And then the what you actually do <laughs> in the second half. This is uh, good old Bill Maher and Samantha Powers, who worked for the Obama administration in the realm of I would say foreign policy. Let's see. There we go. Check this out, because this is what I I would say it's like consider this as a possibility. Cause I know people believe like, oh Rokan has done some you know cool shit, some good shit, the Yemen the Yemen policy, get us get our support out of Yemen. He was a part of that and all these other things. Or the uh right, am- uh, amendment to the War Powers Act, all that shit. Or Matt Duss, right? He uh he kind of sold the serious story without saying like, you know, it's possible to you know, I'm not gonna say whether or not he used chemical weapons. I'm not gonna say that. I think he said that on a Sam Cedar uh podcast or whatever show radio show his venezuela comments were quite troubling <laughs> but you know maybe there's a ray of hope for you but this should be something that you're heavily considering like this could be the thing because this chick started out seeming like oh you're like a one of those humanitarian people 
right? Like, check this out. Check out the first half of this little portion versus the second half of it. Here we go. Uh, and figure out what the hell is going on in the world. And so I went back to college and I worked at it. And then just as I graduated, I had another one of those kind of moments. And I opened up the newspaper and there were concentration camps in Europe 50 years after the Holocaust. Right. And it was that that made me think. The Balkan Wars, sure. something I can do. Um, I tried to be an aid worker. I had no skills. And I had covered the women's volleyball. Right, and you were college, very so critical of... So, right, I'm... I, uh, Right, a humanitarian issue, epiphany moment. Like, oh fuck, I should really, I'm, I really should try to help and do that. And Bill's gonna say, oh, you were critical of, you know, you were just like Barack Obama. You were very critical of America. Check this out. Of, of America, and that. I had covered the women's volleyball. Right, and you were college, very so critical of, of America, and that really got the attention of somebody you have a lot in common with, which is the man you worked for, <laughs> Barack Obama. I mean, you both lived in. A few different countries when you were little, right? Yeah, um, I mean, it was something. A somebody... troublesome father, a, a very uh, enlightened mother who was ahead of her time. Hey, I never thought of those those parallels. Yeah, the, 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 quite that number of parallels, but definitely, I mean, one of the things that drew me to him, and maybe him to my writing, was the ability to see America from the inside and push American interests, but also to be able to step back and say, what do we look like? Also to others, right. do we have credibility? Do we have legitimacy? How can we build that store of capital so we can draw on it when we need it? Do you hear? Do you hear that statement? I'm gonna play that part again. Listen to that. To wait. Yeah. The, the, quite that number of parallels, but definitely. I mean, one of the things that drew me to him, and maybe him to my writing, was the ability to see America from the inside and push American interests, but also to be able to step back and say, what do we look like? Also to others, right. do we have credibility? Do we have legitimacy? How can we build that store of capital so we can draw on it when we need it? The first half, a humanitarian, you know, God, I, I saw this tragedy in a newspaper and it woke me up. It woke me up. I started seeing the world differently. It's like, oh my God, there's tragedy in the world. How do I, I tried to be an aide. I tried, I tried so many, like, how do I help? And the second half, yeah, I tried to, you know, view things from the inside so that we could uh, build enough capital with the other nations that they, when they look at us, they, they will fear us. I mean, um, they will respect what we have to say and we can build the capital to uh, get them to do what we want <laughs> to help U.S. interests. That's, a, that's one of those words, right, that you hear from Bush or Obama and their... Can, and their uh, in their administrations. U.S. interests. We need to help U.S. interests in the Middle East. It's like, what does that mean? And then you find out what it means. And you find out, like, you didn't have a real epiphany, did you? Or you did, and someone, they killed the real you and cloned you or something? That's what happens. I think that's what happens when someone zaps their fucking conscience out of them. When they're like... Bury, bury that conscience. It's like you're just a clone of who you really are. Which means you're a tool. Which is how you get used. And how you can do horrible things without losing any sleep over it. Or you don't even do horrible things. You just let the guy next to you do the horrible things without saying anything about it. Or you say something about it, but you only tell your husband or your wife. Or your diary. But the rest of the world who are like, yeah, Obama, you don't tell them about it. Passing the buck so I don't have to deal with my own conscience. Dear Lord. All right, this has been a long video. Maybe I should have split them up, but whatever. Uh, all right, don't forget to uh, subscribe if you feel like. Comment. Agree. Disagree. Tell me what you think. Is this whole jumbled mess? Does it say anything legitimate? You tell me. Don't forget to donate. Devin's Journey to Recovery, GoFundMe link in the description box. And with all that said, give this video a thumbs down. Say you want to get him.